Monday, happy hot news, everybody. Welcome back, we got some tech news for you. After we tell you, or ask you rather, the existential question of the day, which is courtesy of Reese. He just mentioned to me when I told him I didn't have one picked out. What a hero. When you water water, does it grow? You know, like when you water a plant, plants grow. But when you water water, does it actually grow? I think it does, because you're adding more water. It's, it's brilliant. It's science. It's, <laughs> it's math related to science. And this is, I think that's one of our best existential questions ever. If you want the best graphics card ever, it appears that NVIDIA is ready to give it to you after over a month delay of GTC, which is their annual technology conference, which they typically unveil new architectures out. NVIDIA has finally announced the new live stream date for their GTC keynote, which is going to be May 14th with the tagline, get amped for latest platform breakthroughs in AI, deep learning, autonomous vehicles, robotics, and professional graphic, which you can absolutely be certain that with GTC being live stream, we are going to do a companion stream to that as well. So you can tune in on May 14th for that here at UFD Tech or over on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Just a quick little plug for that. So come join us over there for GTC goodness. I do want to preface up front, just like with a whole bunch of other live streams that we've done, this is likely going to be a lot of professional level talk, a lot about AI, a lot about deep learning, and everybody's tuning in for the 3080 Ti. Chill your horses, just relax. Whoa, 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 whoa. That'll come eventually, probably not gonna happen on this stream. Something to be excited about because we're likely going to get the new architecture announced, especially with the tagline of get amped, but uh, whether or not we're gonna get the consumer level cards, typically GTC isn't for that. However, if you remember the GTC back in 2018, I believe it was, that's when we got the Star Wars demo that they used to death. <laughs> So you want ray tracing goodness, I'm sure we're gonna get that at GTC. So stay hyped for that, my friends. But while we're all waiting for Ampere to be the next generation of card, I tell you that there is one card that just got announced that I so desperately want, and I've contacted them about it, and I'm hoping that they'll send me a review sample, but I want this thing because it is so beautiful. And that is the Galax 2070 Super Pink Edition. It is pink, but the best thing about it is that they give us a white PCB, unlike the cowards over at Asus, which give you a white edition with a black PCB. We got a pink edition with the white PCB. It looks so freaking good. Galax, hit your boy up, please. Obviously, you may want a pink PCB, but I'll settle for a white PCB on this one. But that's not the end of the NVIDIA news. No, my friends, it has been formally announced that NVIDIA has acquired Mellanox. This is something that's been in the work for quite a while. They put in a valuation for them at $6.9 billion, but had to go through regulatory boards to make sure that there was no antitrust stuff going on. And then we talked about in an episode of Hot News either last week or two weeks ago, that NVIDIA finally got the approval from the Chinese government to move forward with it. And now NVIDIA has finally said that it is totally done. And the expanding use of AI and data science is reshaping computing and data center architecture Architectures. With Mellanox, the new NVIDIA has end-to-end -end technology from AI computing to networking, full stack offerings from processors to software. It's just a good experience for NVIDIA. That's the general gist of that comment. NVIDIA, Mellanox, it's a marriage made in heaven. Speaking of marriage, that's what AMD did when they came out with their Zen 2 architecture, fusing two chiplets together. But with the Ryzen 3 chips that were expected to come out, Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X, we've been wondering how on earth do they do it? Is it two chiplets? Is it one chiplet? Is it one CCX? Is it two CCXs? How are they making it? And there are apparently now leaked slides coming out that show that there is indeed a difference between the Ryzen 3 3100 and the 3300X that have nothing to do with clock speed and actually have to do with the CCXs themselves. So the Ryzen 3 3100 has four cores divided across two CCXs, which means that they have to communicate across the infinity fabric. So that means that there's going to be a little bit of higher latency on the 3100, whereas the 3300X has all four cores on a single CCX and has the full use of the 16 megabytes of L3 cache. So the four core 3300X is going to have less latency than the 3100, even with that clock speed difference between them. They are fundamentally different at the base level based on how AMD is setting this up. So there's good reason for them to even exist and for them to be a price difference between them. However, as we've seen from other chips, the latency difference between the CCXs is actually really, really good on Zen 2. So how much of a performance difference this is gonna make? Probably not a whole lot. It's really gonna come down to your RAM and the clock speeds of these two chips rather than the fact that the four cores are deferred over two different CCXs. But that's not the only four core new chip that we need to be looking out for. 
four, we obviously have Comet Lake coming out from Intel. The i310 series, the i310 300 and 10100 have finally seen benchmarks. And while the Ryzen 3 3100 goes toe to toe with the 7700K from three years ago, it appears that Intel didn't think to give the i3s that type of performance because what we're seeing is that the single core performance of the 10100 is about the same as the 3100X, whereas the 3300X slaughters both of them. The multi-core performance on the 3300X also beats both of them and beats the 7700K. So performance shows that AMD is still gonna be the way to go. Pricing is probably gonna put it in favor of AMD. We already know the price of all of that. So AMD still seems to be the winner at the bottom line of the lineup. But there's also new AMD details coming out. We have the world's first picture of the IO dies on AMD's Matisse and Rome IO controllers. You can take a look at it. We'll leave a link in the video description in case you wanna see the actual breakdown of how the IO controllers are set up. It's been pictured for the first time. But what's also been pictured for the first time in word format, which means that somebody typed something out and it's a rumor at this point, so take it with the giant grain of salt. We have the name for the next generation of APUs coming out from AMD. Obviously, we have Renoir, which we're seeing in the Ryzen 4000 CPUs and is anticipated to come out with the next generation of Ryzen 5 4400G. That's what we're getting, where it's Zen 2 CPU plus Vega graphics. Well, the next generation APUs are apparently gonna be called Cezanne, which I'm probably pronouncing incorrectly. Apparently, AMD really wants to go with French names on this. I just, you know, my American brain can't handle French words. I'm not from Quebec. Anyways, the rumor behind this is that it's gonna have Zen 3 cores and the iGPU side is unknown, but they're anticipating RDNA 2, which I would say is a little weird considering that AMD is always a generation behind on the GPU and RDNA 2 would technically be a generation behind, but also means that they're skipping RDNA 1. We'll have to see if that works, but they're saying Cezanne CPU and then Navi 23 mobile. We can see if that actually comes to fruition. We're still waiting on Renoir and desktop. So, I mean, we'll talk about Cezanne later. And what we're gonna be talking about later is Intel's Comet Lake lineup, but we got more motherboards leaking. The MSI Meg Z490 Ace, Mag Z490 Tomahawk, and the MPG Z490 Gaming Carbon have all leaked on the video card site. You can go check that out in case you're interested, but that's not the most interesting motherboard that got leaked. No, my friends, that is the Maxun B460, which Maxun is probably a company that Northern American people are not too familiar with. They're actually a pretty decent brand in China, as far as I'm aware. Anyways, the B460, which is supposed to be the mid-tier chipset, apparently has support for overclocking, which is actually a feature we haven't seen from Intel in quite some time. Obviously, this might be in direct competition to AMD providing overclocking on B350 and B450 and B550, the mid-tier chipset. So providing it on the B460 will hopefully allow that so that you can put a B460 with a 10900K, except for you're gonna wanna check the VRMs on that because your B460, while it could overclock, might also explode and die because it's trying to pull 400 watts for your CPU. We'll see about that. That, but pulling 400 watts is probably not even close to the amount that TSMC is going to need to produce this next node that they're allegedly starting the R&D on, which is two nanometers. TSMC is starting research and development and exploratory studies on the two nanometer process. They're already on seven nanometers. Five nanometers is ramping up for Apple. We've talked about how three nanometers is actually on track for 2022. Well, they're not going to stop there. TSMC, two nanometers. What comes after two nanometers? Who cares? I can't even count that low. Speaking of counting, that low Linux it's too low for me to even get on that's salty joke salty joke I'm sorry Linux fanboys anyways Lenovo is shipping ThinkPad laptops with Fedora in case you want to use that which I'm sure we're gonna get a dozen comments on why Fedora is not Linux it's Unix and you should know the difference but I don't and I may be wrong even calling you out for saying how you're gonna correct me but you're gonna correct me for that isn't that right but I need to color correct our videos and I do that with a monitor and we do it with a Philips monitor here at the UFD tech office. Catlin is actually working on one of these ultra wide Philips momentum monitors. However, they've announced their next generation, which is going to have 144 Hertz, which they're saying is designed for next gen consoles, which makes a little sense, except for our PS5s and Xbox Series X is really gonna have ultra wide support. I'm gonna say doubt. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a high doubt on that. Anyways, we've loved these. It has four millisecond response time, 144 hertz refresh rate, 1440p. They're actually really gorgeous monitors and they're priced very appropriately. We got Catlins for $430 back in January. I love it a lot. And what you're not gonna love a lot is Google Pixel Buds. They're a weird shape. Why does anybody want these? Anyways, they're gonna be coming out regardless of whether or not you want them. And their app is available on the Play Store. Yes, an app is available before the final product. You're welcome, says Google. Look at them. 
they're, they could be yours. Get 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 excited for it before they're out. And I got excited for the moon before I ever went there because you know it's up in the sky and you see it all the time. Well, we now have the first moon map, courtesy of the USGS. It's so beautiful. Look at the moon map. All the pock marks, all the comet landings. Are they technically comets? Probably not. They're probably asteroids hitting the lunar surface. Anyways, it's a one to five million scale map, color coded. And you can identify all the geological features. It's beautiful. Check out the moon and check out the existential question of the day, which is, if you add water to water, if you water water, do you get more water? Yo dog, I heard you like water, so I put water in your water so you can grow your water with your water. And I'm gonna grow myself a new pair of legs to get off this chair to get out of here because it's the end of hot news. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.